then you have an opportunity to do oh. something. I'm sorry. Caleb Plant, such a good fighter. Hard left hook, and Caleb Plant nearly slides through the ropes. A few moments later. The show me, man. I mean, he's tough. We know he has skills, but you can't teach hard. And look at this kid. If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. But if I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGNG. I'm praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I don't know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. I'm back here in the back of my truck, man, chilling outside with Kimba Bandit. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they all fresh and clean. We just took a little bath. Bandit, look up. Bandit. Look up, fool. Bandit. He just root. Kimba about to jump down. <laughs> Kimba don't want to be in the truck no more, man. He said, hey, bro, I'm, I'm out of here. So we gonna follow what Kimba did. We gonna follow suit, man. Since he out of there, we out of there too. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, so I wanted to talk about what transpired yesterday, man, with the uh, with the big old fight event, man, with Edgar Berlanga and Canelo Alvarez, man. It was a, it was a pretty good event, man. You know, it was a it was a little expensive. So if you didn't uh, uh, buy it, you didn't purchase it. I understand, you know. So if you missed it or whatever you did, you bootlegged it, whatever. That's between you and your business. Don't right? speak on how they pay you, cause pocket watching us men shouldn't do, and that's just by nature. But thank you. But I actually thought it was a good fight, man. I thought that. Uh, um, you know, we're going to talk about the whole event first before we get to the main event, you know, which is uh, Canelo and Berlanga. Obviously, let's start off with the, uh, with, 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 with the prelims. You know, the prelims saw Steven Fulton. He was a highlight of the pre prelims going against Carlos Castro, who definitely came to fight, man. In my opinion, man, Carlos Castro, he could have won that fight. You know, he got to be kicking himself. I actually scored it 95-94 in favor of Steven Fulton. And I know people are like, oh, this is going to be a controversial one. It's a very close fight. I don't think it was controversial at all, man. I thought that it was a close fight that Steven Fulton won, despite being dropped and despite being hurt. But when Castro hurt him, he didn't take advantage of it. He didn't fight with any urgency. It's like you couldn't tell that Steven Fulton was hurt just going off of the body language and the response of uh, uh, Carlos Castro. Like he just, he, you would think it was just a regular day when he hurt Steven Fulton. Like you're supposed to take advantage of that. You're supposed to go, go uh, uh, a full Monty, you know what I'm saying? A uh, complete pedal to the floor, you know what I'm saying? Foot on the gas, but he didn't do that. So I, I was saying it during the live stream because you know we stream the fights live. And I was saying, man, uh, uh, he's going to regret this, man. If he doesn't win this fight, he's going to look at look back at this and regret not fighting with a sense of urgency. And sure enough, Stephen Fulton won um, I, uh, by split decision. Uh, and next, next up we had, um, before that, we had Jonathan Lopez, who was a um, frequent... He's a frequent training partner of uh, Naya Inouye. You know, he he put on a, a, a good show, you know, um, uh, dropping his opponent, uh, Ma um, Medina, dropping his opponent, Medina, in the last round, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. And then we also saw Roman Villa, man. Roman Villa, man. He got stopped, man. That was that was crazy. I was not expecting that. Uh, he he got stopped by his opponent, who was on a, a nice little win streak. His name slips me right now. I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, that was a good fight as well. Now going on to the undercard, moving on, man. We had um, Roldy Romero, who who looked pretty good, man. Roldy Romero looked, looked he looked pretty decent. You know, it was, it was it was a good fight. You know, Manuel Jaime did his thing. You know, he only had one loss. Demonstrated that he was a tough fight. Nobody came to lay down. But we already knew going into this that this was a favorites card, right? Uh, pretty much all the favorites were, were favorites for a reason that we thought they were going to win and you know spoiler alert all the favorites did win you know the betting favorites that is but um yeah so um Roldy Romero he did his thing and got the victory uh convincing enough I don't think that he really looked too impressive while doing it but Manuel Jaime is, is, is not a pushover either man and nobody came to lay down on on, on that front uh so man, uh, Roldy Romero won that Roly you dumbass you know um next up we have uh who was next after that uh, was it was Caleb Plant and Trevor McCumbie next or was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Caleb Plant and Trevor McCumbie, that fight, man, pff, bro, this fight was the best fight on the card. You know, I, and it really shocked me because I thought it was going to be. Uh, I knew I knew it posed a threat because of circumstances. You know, Trevor McCumbie being a, a, a big puncher, undefeated, twenty seven wins, I believe, twenty one or twenty two knockouts. You know, going into the fight and Caleb Plant coming off a very tough uh, loss. Um, and a year and a half hiatus, you know, the last time we seen him, he lost was, uh, uh, last time we seen him in the ring was against, uh, David Benavidez on Monstro, uh, last year, March. So that's about a year and a half. And, um, you know, he lost a tough fight. You know, it was a decision that, you know, and, and as a fight prolonged, it progressively got worse 
for Caleb Plant. So it was a tough loss. You know, he coming off of a mean sabbatical and we didn't know what kind of uh, fighter he was going to be, you know, but he turned out to be Caleb sweet hands like we thought, man. I thought I was very impressed with him. I was very impressed with Trevor McCombie going in. I can't say that I'm a fan. Of, I was a fan of Trevor McCombie, but now, you know, I'm, I'm a little more excited to see him, man. I th- he earned my respect, man. I thought he put on a show, you know, they're doing both doing their own, their own uh, bit of showboating, which I thought was always, it's always entertaining. And I love it. You know, I know some people don't like when, people, when guys are boastful, but hey, man, they're putting their lives on the line, man. Go ahead and go ahead and stun and do a little TikTok dance. That's what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Hype up the crowd. So I thought it was a lot of back and forth. K the play getting dropped. Uh, he really got dropped twice. You know, one was a, one didn't count. You could argue he got dropped three times, but uh, yeah, definitely the, um, Definitely got dropped one time that count in, and the other two were up for debate. Uh, but but Caleb Plant, man, we saw him demonstrate his intelligence, him and his trainer's intelligence and his trainer's greatness. You know, uh, bread men, big salute to them. We saw in real time where they adapted to what was going on in the ring, and they came out with a game plan and started smothering Trevor McCombie's punches. I thought that was a phenomenal showing and display of, of, of intellect and experience and 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 the ability to, to, to be great enough to execute that, that new game plan that you made up let's let's be let's face it he made it up instantaneously and and they and they adapted they read what they read uh what was going on and they saw what trevor mccombie's was doing and what he what he excelled at and then they they figured out a game plan right there in real time and 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 and, and it worked you know what i'm saying they implemented the game plan and gave the plan when they executed the game plan to smother Trevor McCombie and, and stop him from doing what he was doing to uh, land those good punches on Caleb Plant. And he came out with a stoppage. Now, I will, I will be honest, um, that in my, my immediate thought, Kimba, you got to stop it. I don't know what you're doing. My, my, my immediate thought um, in regards to the stoppage, I thought it was a little premature. But then if you watch it, I, I saw that Trevor McCombie, he was clearly hurt and he dropped his hands. You getting hit with hooks, man. Caleb Plant was unloading with hooks on him. So uh, you don't want anybody to get hurt. You know, it's, it's, it's a fight game. So you want to be careful. But, you know, considering the fact that Trevor McCombie is undefeated or was undefeated, right? I think that you give him an opportunity to at least fall that way. If you fall, you know, box is a gentleman sport. He gets to reset and, uh, and give him the opportunity to um, to gather himself and, and possibly make the, the 10 count, you know, or if he doesn't, then it gets called off. And also when you consider that it was towards the end of the round too. So if he would have survived the 10 count, he would have had his minute of, of round intermission and potentially gather himself but um yeah he was definitely in danger though so i'm not mad at it you know it was a bang bang play and the ref made a, a, a judgment call and i'm not too mad at it you know i know some people are going to be upset but if trevor mccombie himself didn't seem like he was too irate about the situation or upset at all then next up we had uh danny swift garcia versus arizlandi laura man i was surprised man danny garcia you know his first uh first uh time he was knocked down first time he touched the canvas you know coming off a two-year sabbatical himself you know we have a lot of layoffs right people coming back and he's, and he's stepping up in his debut at the highest weight class that he's ever been you know the 160 battle even though it was at a catch weight of 157 it was still the highest weight that he's ever been so he had some questions to answer he's going against laura who's who's an older older statesman you know what i'm saying older king at 160 you know as far as being a champion but he still had enough of the tank to uh to beat danny garcia and i think that danny garcia some people will say he quit i don't think i don't consider it quitting man i know uh, we will discuss this on the stream so come through we'll argue there's not enough time on this video for me to go into the details why i don't think he quit but i do think he was hurt you know and sometimes when you're when when you're hurt to a certain point where you don't feel like you can continue you make a judgment call whether you or your trainer but i don't i don't consider that uh quitting per se but he definitely got hurt and um you know i think that if you would have went any further he would have got probably placed on his back you know instead of it being a tko it would have been a ko you know so uh he made he made a, a decision a life decision for himself man so i can't i can't knock that so we had arizlandi laura being daniel Swift garcia now for the meat and potatoes the main event um uh, uh canelo saul canelo alvarez aka cinnamon what we call him right here man one of my favorite fighters him and edgar belonga had a great showdown they revitalized the mexican and puerto rican rivalry in boxing you know what i'm saying and uh Man, that fight was crazy, bro. I, I thought, you know, I think Berlanga, what, what, what round did he get dropped? Was it the fourth round? I believe it was the fourth round. He got dropped. And Berlanga, man, he was definitely impressive, man. He, he impressed me because not only did he fight through adversity, he got up from the knockdown and you he, he kept fighting. You know what I'm saying? He didn't cower under the pressure. He he, he actually, I, like he was fighting with some pride. And, you know, I, to, to, despite uh, most, pe- most people's initial thoughts, I know mine too, I wasn't sure what he would do and how he would respond with fighting under these bright lights, under somebody, uh, with somebody. Somebody who's experienced like Canelo is an all-time great like Canelo and legendary like Canelo, man. So I thought he put on a good show. I know there's not really any moral victories in boxing and combat sports per se, um, but I think this was a moral victory. You don't go in there. You don't want to lose. You're not happy that you lost, but I thought he raised his stock in this loss because he put up a great fight, man. Uh, uh, he answered a lot of questions, and he showed that he belongs in there with the top fighters, you know, and, he, and, and man, everybody thought this was going to be an easy fight, and I do 
think that while the fight transpired like I thought it would, you know, I thought it would be a um I thought it would be a, I don't want to say easy night because I want to disrespect Edgar Belanga. It was a, it was a competitive fight, you know. And, I, and I, while I think that Canelo won convincingly, I do think he had some trouble and he struggled, man. And I, but I don't think that's because Canelo looked bad in any way. It's just that Berlanga looked much better. He, I was more impressed with how Berlanga looked than I anticipated. You know what I'm saying? He came through and actually fought. And it's kind of similar to what um, Esau Pippo Cruz did with Javante Tank Davis. Like, you know what I'm saying? No moral victories, but even though he lost, he's still impressed, you know, and he could ride that momentum onto his next fight to carry it on throughout his career. So I think Berlanga could definitely improve from this loss, just like Canelo did with his loss to Floyd Mayweather. Uh, just like I think Frank the Ghost Martin will do in his loss to Tank, just like Pippo did with his loss to Tank. And yeah, man, I think you just, it, it's opportunity to get better. I think Jaime Munguia will also improve from his loss to Canelo, and I think that Berlanga, he, he impressed a lot of people, myself included, man, so shout out to Berlanga. You know, like I said, the, 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 you, you don't just want a moral victory, but man, damn it, that was pretty close, you know what I'm saying? I, th I think that he very very much impressed a lot of people, and I'm one of them, man, so shout out to Edgar Berlanga for putting up a great fight, uh, uh, not cowering under pressure, uh, and not shrinking, and definitely manning up, man, and gaining a lot of people's respect, you know what I'm saying? The same, same with McCombie, he also gained some respect as well, but I think the fight of the night was definitely Caleb Plant, and uh, the performance of the night, I will, even though uh, we saw Arizlandi Lara stop Danny Garcia, I still got to give the performance of the night to Caleb Plant, too, because he bounced back after getting knocked down. He, he bounced back after getting uh, 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 stung and, 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 and wobbled. And they implemented the game plan, him and his team, man, whether it was his father, his, his trainer, himself. They implemented that game plan, and we saw it in real time. Man, it was beautiful boxing, man. It showed the adaptation. It showed experience. It showed composure. And it showed the ability to execute the game plan. And it showed his talent, because you can make a game plan, but not everybody can execute it. So I thought that Caleb Plant uh, uh, and Trevor McCombie was a fight of the night from a competitive standpoint, going back and forth. Um, and then I also think that Caleb Plant had the performance of the night, man. Shout out to Caleb Sweethands Plants. It was a great fight. Shout out to everybody that came through, man. It was, it was so much fun uh, uh, covering cover, covering the sport of boxing and, uh, with great company, you know what I'm saying, having great open dialogue and, enjoy, and enjoying it, man. If you missed it, come through, man. You know what I'm saying? We provide all live boxing commentary. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. What do you think is next for Edgar Belanga? We know Caleb Plant, I mean, Canelo has already expressed that he wants Bivol next. If Bivol uh, could, 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 can um, can uh, uh, beat better BF for the undisputed light heavyweight championship, right? He will. He would like to uh, get that rematch and avenge that loss. Um, but if that doesn't happen, then we probably, most likely, you probably think he's going to fight Terence Crawford or somebody like that. So we kind of, you kind of. There's no really big surprises there from Canelo's end. But Edgar Belong, what do you think he he could do next? I would like for him to fight. Man, he could fight anybody, man. If Jaime Munguia beats Eric Bazinian next week, he could fight Jaime Munguia. He could fight Caleb Plant. He could get a rematch with Canelo, uh, which I, I think it would behoove him to get a little bit more experience before rematching Canelo. He could fight Diego Pacheco. Edgar Belanga stock definitely went up, man. Definitely went up, man. So appreciate y'all rocking me as always. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. And uh, take care of yourselves. And remember, most importantly, with God, we can do anything without God or nothing. The doctor's out. Peace. Let me go get banded out the truck because he's still in the truck. And Kimbo's right here looking crazy. <laughs> From the hood to college, both worlds, they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold, we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.